Hey, it's Mark Neese with Sync Lab Media. Welcome to this week's episode of the VX Factor Live. We've got Sean Bruton here with us today. We'll be right back. And welcome back to the VX Factor Live. Very happy to have Sean Bruton in the studio with us today, CEO of Complyify, and actually our next door neighbor right yeah. here at Venture X. Look, look at each other across the hallway <laughs> every day. So now face to face. Exactly. So thanks very much for taking the time out of My your course. day to be a guest on the show today. And uh, for those watching, um, for the benefit of them, why don't you tell, just tell us a little bit about your background and uh, and how you got into the space that you're in now. Yeah, I, I'm a lifelong security nut, cyber security nut. I've, I've spent my whole career since 97 helping companies uh, better manage cybersecurity risk and combating the, the threats that are exist out there to them today. Well, it's, a, it's huge today, too. I mean, we yeah. just, uh, just this morning, I'm going to date the show a little bit, but the whole, like, AT&T hack this morning. I don't yeah. know if you, yeah, I'm sure you probably yes. saw the news uh -huh. coming across about that, but I mean, even, even these huge companies that spend millions of dollars of resources are still vulnerable to that, and so... Yeah. I mean, as a small guy, it's like, oh my God, but what what can we do, right? So, yeah. so tell us a little bit about um, Complyfy. Like, how long have you been in business, and kind of what is there a certain niche that you focus on as far as size of business or industry or? Whatever? Yeah. So when when I first got started in security a little over twenty years ago, um, the big threats back then were were mostly embarrassing. You know, you'd get hacked, and someone would put up. Uh, you know, some embarrassing thing on your company website or be disrupted to your business, but it wasn't that big of a deal, right? Um, but as the threats evolved, it's turned into a bunch of state-sponsored crime and, and criminal activities and you know, mob-related activities, and it's, it's big dollar business for these cyber intrusions, and it's really expensive for companies. Um, so the cyber threats uh, that are out there have led to companies needing to manage risk of cybersecurity from the top down. Uh, so boards and management teams realize that they need to manage this today, but you can't manage anything in business without the metrics to be able to do so. Um, and my whole career has been in uh, managed uh, security services, helping companies outsource their security problems, but you can't at the end of the day outsource everything. You can't outsource the accountability for how you run your business and the partners you work with and making sure that you're managing all the different aspects of how you protect that sensitive data. So that's what we formed Complyify to do, was to build a platform for these small and mid-market companies who don't have an army of risk management professionals. Uh, we've built a platform kind of like TurboTax for cybersecurity, where you can just use it and it will guide you through your security journey and making sure you're meeting your regulatory obligations, making sure you're abiding by the commercial security standards that apply to your business, and then help you give confidence to everybody that cares about uh, your security posture, you know, your board, your customers, your assessors, everyone that's in that ecosystem. Yeah. So I've seen you give a, a presentation, kind of, and kind of an overview of, of your platform and, and how it's used. And I think one of the examples that you used was like a medical is that is that right, or is it more like geared toward like accounting, or is it? Yeah, I, I know the analogy you're talking about. Right. That we uh, we did at our one million cups presentation. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you think about how businesses manage risk, right, and finance is a good example. Mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't start off the year and set yourself a budget and say, "All right, guys, this is what we need to spend to make our dreams come true this year," right? And then, I mean, obviously you do that, but then you wouldn't then go and ignore your cash flow and every dollar that you're spending and what might or might not be coming in in revenue until the end of the year when you bring in that outside accountant to look at your books, right? Mm -hmm. That'd be insane. You know, companies would be turning inside out, they'd be going bankrupt, right. like no control would be spending and you'd be building a culture of only caring about your cash flow once a year. Mm -hmm. But that's exactly what companies do when it comes to cybersecurity today, right? They start off the year with good intentions, they say, we're going to do this right this year, but our only bit of feedback for how we're going to measure how well we're doing with security is going to be at the end of the year when we bring in that outside assessor. Mm. With no way to measure your security posture throughout the year and your compliance obligations, there's no way to manage it, which means your entire team is, is being trained effectively to say, I only care about my security concerns right before the audit. Mm. And you see this pattern repeated again and again and again. Um, Verizon does this awesome data report every year. Uh, if you look at the, the Verizon PCI report or the Verizon data breach report, uh, the metrics in there are, are somewhat terrifying, but it's right. a good data source, right? 
uh, eighty percent of companies are out of compliance within weeks of their annual assessment. Mm. Um, you know, the pressure's off, there's no accountability, everything just starts reverting back to how it was before. And, you know, compliance doesn't drive business forward, but compliance helps us manage risk. And when we don't have any way to do that, our companies end up being exposed. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot more expensive to deal with a cyber intrusion when you haven't been managing to those baseline responsibilities than if you do try and manage that ahead of time. And yeah. that's what we help people do. Well, those examples that you showed of the platform are pretty mm -hmm. slick. I think you brought like a few, yeah. a few screenshots uh, for us to look at. So why don't we, for the benefit of the audience, why don't we look at a couple of those screenshots and you can kind of explain yeah. kind of what, you know, what, what, what those do on the platform. Yeah, so uh, you know, there's a lot of tools out there that are very technical in nature for detecting and managing specific threats. That's not what we are. We're the next level of abstraction up to help you manage your security posture. So our dashboards start by looking at some very high-level metrics, like we give a CSQ score, that's your cybersecurity quotient. You can think of it like a credit score for security. It's really factoring in a, literally hundreds of thousands of different data points to help uh, identify uh, how risky your business is operating on the security front. We also call attention to your top risks, and, and because since no one wants to show their, their bosses just to see a red, we show the top mitigated ones as well. Um, and since a lot of companies' security activities are driven by compliance, we do track uh, about a dozen different security uh, standards today, both public ones from government regulators and the private ones that industries have adopted, like PCI that you're looking at here. Uh, real detailed drill-down metrics showing you exactly where your gaps are, uh, and then guiding your customers, to, or sorry, guiding your team towards uh, closing those gaps and better managing your security posture over time. And then, you know, obviously you want to know where in your company the risk is. So we, we highlight on your teams, uh, you know, who's best managing risk, who's got the most exposed risk, as well as who's on top of their security responsibilities and maybe who needs a little bit of push to get things moving forward. Cool, cool. It looks like, I mean, it looks to me like it'd be very easy to use from a, you know, from a user standpoint, you know, that, that UX factor. So, you know, I think you guys have done a great, a great job with that, um, making it easy to understand and actually kind of be a little bit proactive, mm -hmm. right, instead of just like waiting until there's a huge exactly. issue and then having to respond to it, right? Yeah. So, and, you know, managing compliance isn't a new concern. It's as mm -hmm. old as business itself. Right. And there's, a, there's already a $40 billion market called GRC, Governance, Risk, and Compliance. Mm -hmm. All the big software shops have a GRC product. And that's great if you're a large enterprise, right? Because mm -hmm. you've got really complicated concerns and you've got a whole department of risk management professionals that you need to orchestrate. Uh, they're really technical, really tactical. You can do just about anything with them. But if you're a small and mid-sized company, right? you don't have an army of risk management professionals. You've mm. got your IT team and representatives from various different other parts of your organization who mm. have an impact on security, and they need something easy to use, right? Mm. They need that TurboTax for cybersecurity type approach that we've brought mm. because they don't have this domain knowledge about how to assess risk, how to manage it, how to make your compliance obligations, make sure that they're met. Uh, so our platform just guides them through all of that. Uh, if you know about your business, you can use our software to learn about your security problems. Very cool. So um, I think that's a good place for us to maybe kind of segue to mm -hmm. what I want to talk about in the second half of the program, which yep. is being an entrepreneur, <laughs> like starting your own business, yep. right? I mean, that's a, that's a risk in itself, right? So how do we manage that risk? And I'd like to hear some of your personal experiences from that, you know, when, when we come back from a break. Mm -hmm. But we're going to take a, a little short break, and we'll continue that conversation um, on the other side. First, before we take that break, one of the things we always do on our shows is we like to recognize local artists. And so if you see the painting that's behind us, uh, this is a local artist named C.J. Crowling, and the name of the uh, piece of art is Genesis 1-1, pretty self-explanatory. Um, and our artwork is provided to us and managed by David Call of da David Call Designs. Um, so if you like the artwork, um, everything is for sale. If you like the artwork, please get a hold of uh, David Call. And this, as well as about uh, 30 other pieces of artwork from three different local artists, are being featured right now here at the Venture X at Dallas by the Galleria and can be viewed here. So stop by and check out the artwork. And uh, now we're going to hear from our sponsors for today's program. So we'll be right back after this. Stay tuned.
and welcome back to the BX Factor Live. Again, we're with Sean Bruton today from Complyify, and uh, we learned a lot about your specific uh, services that you provide uh, to small and mid-market companies and uh, all around the risk management piece. Mm -hmm. So now I'd like to kind of segue that into the risk of being an entrepreneur and, man and managing that risk. So you're the CEO of your own company, right? You have a lot of experience in your industry and saw an opportunity uh, to be able to start your own business. And uh, you're obviously being very successful with that so far. But um, one of the things we like to talk about on the VX Factor is entrepreneurship in general. I mean, you know, like what, what made you, what motivated you to strike out on your own and start your own business? And what have been some of the unique challenges and maybe a couple of successes as well that you've experienced in that journey? Yeah, so uh, I, I literally grew up with startups. Um, mm -hmm. Other than uh, a brief stint when I, I worked for the company that we sold one of my startups to, um, I've, I've been doing startups my entire career. So it, it kind of was my natural home in a way. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it, It's weird to say that the largest company I've worked for uh, was only 100 million in revenue and about 360 employees. Um, that's not that big of a company. Mm. Um, but uh, in my time there, I, I realized it was like, oh, I just this isn't for me, right? Like there's there's not that that drive every single day to make things happen. Uh, things move so much slower. You don't see as much personal impact uh, mm -hmm. on the outcome of, of what you're working on. Right. And and all of that was what really drove me back into startup land. On top of the fact that. This specific concern is something that I've been passionate about uh, managing for years. Uh, it's only been recently that the technologies existed that's allowed us to do it with a software product rather than with human labor, mm -hmm. um, which is why we finally made the leap into it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's uh, uh, startups are great. Um, uh, you, know, you asked about managing a risk of a startup, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? I, I think to some degree, you know, you can't manage all risk. Right. right. And the same thing goes with security. Sometimes you just have to accept a risk and acknowledge that, hey, this is one that we're just not going to be able to mitigate right now. Uh, and there's lots of those in a startup, but I think the one that everyone should realize from the very beginning is that you're just going to have to accept the risk of not sleeping for, <laughs> right. for quite a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what are I mean, what were what were a couple of like the top one or two challenges yeah. for you to to actually just leap off the end of the diving board and, and make that decision. Yeah, I mean, this this is my first startup that I've been a founder of, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, generally at a startup, when you're founding it, you're not taking a market-appropriate salary, if any right. at all. Yeah. So, you know, probably the biggest concern for me uh, was, you know, I was a big step back in terms of income. So I had to put a lot of things in place to make sure that I could do that and I could not be a drain on the company's finances. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, early on, you've got, you got to find really good people, right? Like you've got to have runway to be able to get your product market fit out the door. Mm. Uh, the last thing a, a founder wants to do is, is to be a drain on those resources. Mm. I think that's the, the, the first big thing that you gotta, you got to wrestle with, um, mm. which is why I always tell people if you're interested in doing a startup, the sooner the better, right? Mm. The, the less baggage you're carrying with, through life, the easier it's going to be to get your startup moving. Right, yeah. right. So, um, Having gone through that, I mean, what were, you know, obviously everyone has kind of these milestones or, you know, maybe like an ideal client that you were able to land that mm -hmm. really like enabled you to kind of take the next step and go to the next level yeah. or maybe the ability to attract backing or funding or mm -hmm. bringing in a partner. So what would, what would have been a, a couple of the, the milestones that have really propelled you forward? Yeah. Um, the first thing I'd say is, you know, with customers, don't start a startup without having someone to help you build your product. Mm. Uh, I mean, you should have been talking to not tens, but hopefully hundreds of different potential people doing market research, right? Mm. So you don't end up with a solution in search of a problem. Mm. Um, but once you've done that, you know, and you've got people who are outside people who are potential future customers who are willing to work with you to help build it, then you've got a path towards hitting those milestones and, and, and showing the traction that you need to for your investors. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, when you're just getting started, what your investors are looking for is they're, they're investing in you mm -hmm. because you don't have those milestones yet. Right? Right. So, so they're looking to see, hey, who am I working with? What's their background? You know, 
know, what's their understanding of the market and the problem, what have they done so far, and having done all that homework up front is really going to help you when you when you do need to go raise seed capital. Yeah. Uh, for us, you know, we're we're past the seed stage now, uh, and we're we're looking to do our, our Series A by the end of the year, which is awesome, really exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah we just uh, took the beta label off of our product, and uh, we're uh, we're finally charging for it, uh, which is uh, which is kind of a fantastic milestone to have hit that hit that point of stability and acceptance in the market, mm -hmm. uh, where people have enough confidence to, to you know th that that's the big test. Open your wallet, right? And yeah. when your customers are willing to do that. Then you can go to the investors and tell a whole new story. Right, right. Well, yeah. congratulations. Thank that's you. A, that's a big step. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So one of the things we also like to uh, feature on the VX Factor also is, um, you know, obviously we're both here at VentureX, mm -hmm. uh, Dallas by the Galleria. Uh, you know, we both office here right next door to each other. And um, how does this type of shared office uh, environment and particularly, you know, a space like VentureX, how does that affect your business? Yeah. Well, for us, there, there was no choice. Uh, it was, or it was rather, it was the easy choice to, to go to a co-working space like VentureX. Mm -hmm. um, it just, the resources are so constrained. I think that's what defines a startup more than anything else is just constrained resources mm -hmm. and, and time. Uh, a lot of people forget it's not just money, it's time, right? Time is probably our most precious resource. And Opening an office, finding an office, signing a lease, doing tenant improvements, getting utilities, making sure things are set up for clean, right? Like all of that just sucks time and energy and brain cycles. Mm -hmm. And we were able to just walk in and say, hey, you know, we need a space. Okay, great. You can start today. And here we are with an awesome space, amazing internet, right? Like everything set up, a kitchen built out. Mm -hmm. Like it's fantastic, right? Not to mention that we've got awesome neighbors right. like Zinc Lab who, who are here, uh, you know, that can we can help each other out on our sure. startup journeys. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we've really enjoyed it as well, and it's just interesting to see, you know, all the different types of businesses and different types of people, you know, and especially with the events and the common space to be able to just, plan, like, walk around and, you know, meet people and talk to them and, you know, develop opportunities even, you know, from those relationships. So, you know, it's been, it's been a pretty good environment for us also. Yeah. So, and we get to meet great guys like you and uh, you know and and uh, you know participate in in celebrating your successes as well mm -hmm. and uh, so um, you know we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day I know you're really busy we see you guys just working away over there all the time so, so really appreciate again you taking your time uh, to be with us today so and uh, so for those of you at home and watching us uh, small business owners if you would like information about how you can produce a show like this for your business and get your message out as a thought leader and build trust and authority in your brand, uh, we do have a video podcasting subscription package that we offer at Sync Lab Media uh, where we can help you produce your show right here in this studio or on your own location. We can do it either way. So. If you have any interest in that or know somebody that you know needs their own show, have them give us a call at Sync Lab Media. And that's it for our episode today. Again, Sean, thank Thanks, you Mark. very much for being our guest today. Uh, Complyify, uh, what's the easiest way for somebody to get a hold of you? Yeah, you go to complyify.com or complyify.com or comply.cloud works as well. Okay. Yeah. Great. So if you have cybersecurity concerns or want to meet Sean uh, and talk to him about that, please get a hold of him. Otherwise, we will see you next week on the VX Factor Live. Thanks for joining us.